were there any points in your career where you were forced to make a, a choice between, well, if I keep pushing like this, I'm concerned about what this is going to do for my health over the long term. Talk me through that, you know, that mindset when I you love are faced this, with those I choices. love this conversation because um, I took less than everybody. And I can, I can point it out. I have blood work from the very beginning. How, so how deep can you go into that? Okay. So I went to Miss USA taking 500 milligrams of testosterone with a shot of Deco a week. <laughs> I didn't have any money, but I whipped everybody's ass. First crack at it and quoted as one of the greatest Mr. Uh, Mr. USAs of all time. Didn't take growth hormone until my second Arnold Classic. How deep are we in there? I turned pro in 05. We're talking about 2008. I had already won two pro shows, and now I decided to take growth hormone for the first time. And you're still running 500 milligrams of test? No, I was probably doing like 750. Yep. Very minimal stuff. Because here's my thought process with this. Uh, you watch Fast and the Furious? Mm -hmm. You know this good old saying, too soon, Junior? That plays in bodybuilding. The guy that hits the nitrous too fast in the race loses every time. Why? Because that car was what? Little Honda Civic with a little turbo kit and some bullshit. Handmade, handcrafted Ferraris will always beat that shit. And if you put a little bit of a mod on that thing, you can't catch them. So you're saying that- I rather would build, okay, better analogy. You go Super Saiyan and I can beat you in my base form. <laughs> the internet is happy at a, a you know what I'm Dragon Ball so, Z reference. So let yeah. me let me go ahead and beat you in the base form. Let me work on the base form. Is that so? You're, it seems like then I can't rely on this stuff because here with pharmacology and stuff, are you really getting it from a valuable source? Are you getting it from Bayer? Are you getting it from sharing? Are you getting it from these companies? You don't know. You don't work there. You really want to tax your body. You really want to take something that you really don't know that could really hurt you. And now you're becoming a drug addict, buying drugs from someone at a gym. You're buying it from drug dealers. I know drug dealers. I grew up around drug dealers. I know the mentality. I stayed away from that shit because I was like, you know what? Like, let me just go ahead and slowly roll myself into this because if I want to have longevity after, the, after my career, it would be nice to show that my blood work can prove it. Would you ever release that? My blood work? Yeah. For money? Yeah, I'm not just going to offer it up to somebody, but you know, that's HIPAA. That's a lot of, you know, maybe on my own podcast someday. Yep. yep. Um, okay. So I could walk you through what, why. Okay. So I did the Arnold classic in 2007. I had won the first two pro shows in 2006, Sean Ray, uh, and uh, New York pro realized I needed more time off to do the Olympia. I was going to be undersized. It made no sense to get my ass beat by a bunch of guys that are seasoned veterans. Did the 07 Arnold place fifth first time ever losing. Right. Okay, let me take more time off. Decided to have a deeper off season. Understand that what are the what is the difference between me and everybody else? Well, it was just time, time in the gym, time in the gym, time in the gym. Not drugs. What is drugs going to do? It's not going to shrink time. You need time in the gym. Okay, so it's drugs. So I pound everything, and then what? You know, my trainer said, "Well, I can get you to Mister Olympia in two, three years, but we don't know after what was going to happen after that." So think about that mentality that we see today. Everybody's pounding the stuff. And here's the funny part. The muscle, the muscle tissue is damaged. The skin texture is completely off. Look, man, you see, you see the skin texture. You see that with anybody else? Probably not. I'm not even running shit, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you build that? You build it with the base form. You know how to come off appropriately. You know how to do something like what Arnold would say back in the day. We knew how to do stuff during. It's not an all year thing. Because now you become a drug addict. So, you know how many drug addicts are in bodybuilding? A tremendous amount. Because they're, they're chasing something, but they're not winning something. So you got to be a fucking idiot to go ahead and take all these drugs, right? Not win. Put yourself in not only financial debt, physical debt. It seems to a lot of people, especially looking at your era, mm -hmm. unbelievable that you wouldn't have just been taking everything under the sun but why should i when i was able to win my first couple of amateur shows clean and then just add a little bit when i always heard of a finishing touch that was what was always talked about and then i also saw guys in colorado that were running a lot not winning I'm like well 
okay, so you run too much stuff. You know what happens? You develop side effects, right? So, well, if everybody's doing it, nah, man, why don't you just be different? Because maybe I don't want to do this. Maybe I don't want to have to take drugs like this. Maybe I'm afraid of needles. Maybe I'm afraid of what the the side effects. Do you ever do you do you own an Anabolics two thousand book? Do you own these different eBooks that tell you the good, the bad, the ugly with it? I studied all this shit. So the last thing I ever and you know what's funny? The real truth is that what if they started drug testing severely? Severely. I have no base form. I have no base form physically and also emotionally. Take all the drugs away. It's like taking the Instagram away from an influencer. They lose their shit. What was the maximum that you ever got to in terms as of far as tests? Yeah. Uh, 1,300. I tried 15 and then I was like starting to get watery. And then I remember, no, I did 15. So I went, I was at 13. Then I was like, let's do 15. And then like an, another dose later, you know, like another week goes by and I was like, all right, 17 and five or whatever. I think because it, it was like all sustenance and shit like that. I just got more watery. <laughs> it was just stupid. So then the same thing with growth hormone. Like, okay, so medical journals will state that if you take too much of this stuff, right? Like now you're actually going to inhibit what? More insulin, you know, problems, you know, because I never run insulin, never ran in my entire life. Never. Wow. Never. Give me some money. I'll put on a freaking show, like <laughs> hand on Bibles, like lie detector test, but you're going to pay me that million because I'm going to take all your damn money. I'm going to take it all. So anybody out there want to challenge, just put the money up and I'll do it on national television. I don't give a damn, but you're going to pay me though because you're not going to put me through this bullshit and, and me not get something out of it. So there's that part. But, um, you know, I messed around with Tran and stuff like that. But even that, I realized how harsh that is. That's just stupid. It literally says like liver, kidney damage and all this. I was like, uh, uh-uh, that's not happening. And you so know what's you funny only... for me? What's funny for me is that I tried it enough to realize that I have high prolactin levels when I take it. So, oh, so you got high prolactin. Now you take Dostinex. Why am I doing this? I'm adding all these things in. Why don't I just focus on the training and the modalities that I'm talking about? Like, I'm the one that did the infrared saunas. I'm the one that bought the Fataris 320. I'm the one that did, you know, uh, shit, neuromuscular massage. I'm the one that's doing, you know, DRX 9000, you know, with the decompression of the spine and stuff like that while taking acupuncture, while doing stem, while doing oxygen all at the same time, living in Denver, Colorado. I'm that dude. You can't name another fucking athlete that do. All you see is cold plunges and dry needling and scraping, which is stupid as hell because you see how they scrape and they're scraping people doing the grass and where they're the, 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 their blood blisters and stuff. That's not going to yield any growth. That's just being dumb. So, look, you know, my drug use was very minimal because I understood that there was life afterwards. I had some favorite you know, PEDs and stuff like that, like, you know, like Winnie, stuff like that and growth. But I mean, I just made sure that I took enough to get the job done. Because again, if they were ever going to start testing for shit, I needed to be ready to just be like, I don't need this. I have a foundation. I got a foundation. And you look at me now, people say, oh man, you look younger. You look this. Guess what? Because I treated my body right. You got these other guys. And I also didn't have social media. Here's the thing. When you don't have magazines, you got social media. A professional bodybuilder right now is actually um, having to decide if they're an influencer or a bodybuilder. You see what I'm saying? An influencer can get on some cycles and stuff, almost look like a pro, which they try to do. They take all the best angles and the lighting and all this other shit. Some Photoshop their shit. They sell courses. They sell products and stuff. And they do it for a short period of time, right? But they can create like a thousand episodes within six months. And then they can kind of just not do events because you see some, you don't see a lot of events with them at because, and they can just dress normally because they're not a pro or whatever, right? Pro bodybuilders now feel like they have to compete with them and the same, and they share the same sponsors. So unfortunately, the owners of these companies just focus on certain levels of engagement. Now for a bigger person that weighs over 240 to 270 to 200. Now, how many 300 pound bodybuilders do we have compared to Ronnie's era? A ton more. And they don't outmass Ronnie with quality muscle. Why? Because they're taking drugs more than they're actually doing the work. They're not allowing the body to catch up. We'll get back to talking to Phil in one minute, but first I need to tell you about Factor. I get asked all the time about how to build and maintain muscle, and the most important thing, the first thing you need to do, is ensure you are getting one gram per kilo of body weight in protein. 
every single day. But as you know, if you have ever tried to cook anything ever consistently or stick to your macros, finding whole food, healthy meals that you can have conveniently every single day is difficult. This is where Factor comes in. Their fresh, never frozen meals are designed by registered dietitians and arrive ready to heat and eat in minutes. It requires zero prep. So if you're someone that says, oh, I'd love to hit my protein numbers, but I never have time to cook. Prep takes so long and I hate doing it. This is the solution for you. So if you want to make an improvement to your diet, this August, you can get Factor and start eating better without the hassle. Head to the link in the description below or go to factormeals.com slash MW50 and use the code MW50 for 50% off your first order at checkout. That's factormeals.com slash MW50 and MW50 at checkout. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that clip with Phil, then press here for the full length two hour podcast episode when we go so deep in the history of his career, his reflections on Generation I and his rivalry with Kai Green, plus his 10 best exercises for men to build muscle. Go on, press it.